Welcome back to Shelsley Walsh. The action's really hotting up now this afternoon, so let's go straight over to Jerry and see what's happening on the hill. On the line now is the fastest lady driver ever to climb Shelsley Walsh. This is Sue Young, who shares this four litre gold yard with husband Derry. Between them, they're one of the most successful husband and wife partnerships in hill climbing. Derek has taken several outright wins in club events at Chelsea with a car and Sue has been progressively lowering her own ladies record here for many years. Today though, conditions are just too dusty for her to get close to her target. But as we take a look at some of the action from the first of our two championship runoffs, we can see that Sue's not the only one to have problems with the dusty track. Here's two litre class winner Paul Haynes. This is his chance to get points on the board to maintain his top 10 status, but he spins the Delara at bottom S. No real damage done, but bang goes the chance of a possible score. Even three times champion Martin Groves is not immune. In a rerun of Haynes' incident, he spins the Gould out of the points and, crucially, out of the championship lead. There'll be another chance to make the cut for the second runoff at the end of the day, but for Groves, this is the first setback of the year in his hopes of a fourth title. Conditions aren't much better in the afternoon. This time it's Rob Turnbull that's caught out and he misses the cut for the final runoff. Time to go back to James. Thanks, Jerry. I'm here in the paddock with Sandra Tomlin. Sandra, our son Ollie did a run this morning and uh, had to da dash off again. Yes. A bit of a family emergency. Yes, yes. His wife um, was in labour and um, we now have a little granddaughter weighing five pounds, six ounces, but it doesn't have a name at the moment. Right, it. OK. <laughs> it <laughs> doesn't yeah, have a it name. It doesn't have a name. Not going to be called Shelsley then, no, or no, like definitely that. No, <laughs> I, I have suggested Delara, but that didn't go down too well. Right, OK. I'm not sure Mike Pillbeam would be happy with that, with you driving a Pillbeam either. <laughs> yes, but you can't call a little girl Pillbeam, <laughs> This is <can> true. <laughs> good stuff. So it's been a good, good weekend for you, um, if a little eventful. Yes, yes, exactly. I'm having the baby and um, I'm just dialing myself in in the new car, so being quite steady. But, um, yes, we've got... Amy, my daughter, who normally drives another pill beam, um, yes, she's expecting a baby as well, so it's a family, family event completely. Absolutely. Well, uh, your regular competitor um, driving the big pill beam this year, how are you getting on with the car? Oh, I love it. It's absolutely brilliant, and it really is a dream to drive it. It really is quite... I shouldn't really say that a big single seat is easy to drive, but it is easy to drive. And the paddle shift is absolutely fantastic, you know, to, to sort of do full throttle shift and it just changes into the next gear is brilliant. Does it all for you a bit easier than the uh, than the MP72 you drove before? Yes, it is, and, and the engine's slightly different as well. The power comes in a lot sooner, which, I, you know, we're having to concentrate on a little bit more. Okay. Um, the other one, yes, sort of um, was a little bit more steady before it delivered the power, whereas this is in with a bit more of a wallop. Right. Right, for sure, excellent. Well, your, your involvement in the sport goes much further than just competing. You're also an instructor at the Prescott Hill Climb Drivers School. Yes, yes. For the past three years, I've been um, uh, teaching at Prescott Driving School, and um, we have a special ladies' day, which is why I was initially invited okay. to join, so that they had a lady um, instructor there. Excellent, good stuff. Well, you're obviously uh, fully immersed in the sport. The whole family is from yes, the sound of it. Yes, yes. It's all we do every weekend throughout the summer, and my husband wishes I'd take up knitting. <laughs> right, so, so <laughs> been working on cars and dragging trailers around. Yes, then. exactly. <laughs> and and we'll have a bit more money in the bank as well. Of course, absolutely. Well, wish you the best of luck for the rest okay. of the season. Thanks and uh, a lot. and yeah. Oliver is ready to go next weekend. Excellent. Well, uh, we'll go back uh, back over to Jerry and uh, keep an eye out for part three with there's news of the next arrival in the Tomlin family, I yes. believe. <laughs> well, we might just keep that news under wraps for a later programme, James. But meanwhile, here's Sandra in action in the new four litre gold jug that she shares with her son Oliver. She's held the ladies' record at Chelsea in the past, and who knows, with this new car, she could well get it back again. Now it's back to the British Championship runoff action and a real giant killing act. On a hill that favours the big V8s, a stupendous performance by Will Hall got the tiny force high booster into the runoff each time. Now, with right foot welded to the floorboards, he's well into the points. John Chalmers bumped even two-litre class winner Paul Hames out of the lineup to make the cut for the second shootout. This is a great run by the Formula 3 vault driver and John goes home with his first British point of the year for 10th place in the runoff. Paul Ranson has yet to win a British hill climb round, but he came mighty close here at Shelsey last year and a few weeks ago he had the best weekend of his hill climb career with two second places at Harewood. Back at Chelsley, with the new paddle gear shift fitted to the Gould, he's really flying. 
It's another great result for Paul. Third FTD, just three tenths of a second off the day's outright pace. 1997 champion Roger Moran's chasing Ranson Harb for fifth place on the championship table. He's already notched up an outright win this year at Harewood, son Scott keeping it in the family by winning the other runoff. One of the first to run 2009's top tweak, a paddle shift gear change, their traction control system has given them another marginal edge, but Roger runs midfield each time today. There aren't too many full house IndyCar engines in British hill climbing, but this is one of them. In the back of John Jones' Pillbeam MP88 is a 2.65 litre twin turbo Cosworth XD, and its colossal power and torque make this car a real handful. Jones is delighted to qualify the car as he just makes the cut for the afternoon runoff, but he can't improve on his time and finishes out of the points. Tom New is one of the rising stars of the big single seater class. His Shelsey weekend started badly, but finished with a real storybook ending. Let's go back to James to get the full story. Thanks, Jerry. Down here with Tom New. Tom, you've had a, a pretty successful afternoon. Fourth place in the runoff there, first time in the 23s. Yep, yeah, um, after uh, a bit of a fraught day yesterday, uh, second practice run uh, came off the bottom S and uh, bent for uh, first right hand front corner. Right, and, okay. uh, Front wing off, and uh, so it was all a bit thought going home job, but uh, got back in the paddock and a few spares and that. A few willing hands to few help you out. Hands and yeah, thanks to them, we uh, got it all back together and. Good stuff. Was that just pushing a little hard, not knowing the hills so um, well, or just pushing a little bit too hard and not not slowing it down enough for the for the bottom S? But um, you know, you've got to, you've got to try to get the get your time. So absolutely. Uh, well, it's your first time here with a big car. You've been with the two liter before, and I guess the corners rush up on you with the uh, with the extra grunt. A lot more, yes, yeah. It, you just arrive there a lot quicker, and uh, so you've just got to slow the car down a lot more. Uh, Before you came here, your personal best was in the 25s. Um, forget the 24s, you went straight into the 23s. You've got 20, to be chuffed yeah. with that. Yeah, chuffed a bit, yeah. And creeping up the uh, creeping up the championship table, you're catching Derek Young just yeah, a point yeah, behind now. Yeah, far behind, yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, hopefully you'll uh, you'll keep the pressure on Derek and uh, and keep moving up, and maybe catch Chris up there. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, you never know. Excellent. We're we'll watching right. you at Loughton with interest, and uh, we'll catch you there. Okay, thank you Excellent. very much. Back to you, Jerry. After several seasons in their V6 school, Mark and Andy Collier started to get results. This afternoon they both made the cut and left Shelsley tied on the championship table. Chris Merrick is having his best season yet in the 4-litre Gould Judd, but he's being pushed hard by driving partner Top New. An excellent third place in the first runoff kept him firmly in the championship top three, but a mistake second time up led to his first defeat by his co-driver. Derek Young's had a lot of success here at Shelsley in the past, but the Gould Judd driver's having a troubled season this year. Third in the championship after round four, mechanical problems saw him slump to seventh place before Shelsley. Now he's desperately trying to make up lost ground, and this is another quick run from the Shelsley expert. That's quick through crossing, and after qualifying a fine third fastest, Derek is well on his way to fifth place in the opening runoff. But sadly, gearbox problems will strike again, and he'll miss the afternoon cut. Let's go back to James and catch up with Derek and his wife Sue. Thanks, Jerry. I'm down here in the paddock with Sue and Derek Young, drivers of the Gould Judd. Um, Sue, so you're the ladies record holder here at Shelsley, so it's a venue that suits you well. Yes, I love Shelsley. It's uh, a real adrenaline rush to drive up here. Just, I just love it, and a, and a, and a you know, just great atmosphere. Um, yes, set the record uh, a couple of years ago now, and just keep trying to get back down there. Right, for sure. I mean, it, the hill was recently resurfaced at that point as. Is the hill still as quick as it was at that time, or are you having to work harder for the times? No, I, definitely working harder. The hill was a little bit dusty today. We found the, the hill a little dusty and obviously had a few handling problems as well. So uh, I'm sure I could have improved on my times had we been able to dial those out a little. Absolutely, good stuff. Well, Derek, you had some problems in second qualifying yeah, there. Um, problems with the gearbox? Yeah, absolutely. We've had a few problems the last few meetings, in fact. Um, and it's very, I'm really struggling to get to uh, terms with the problem, but um, hopefully we've got a couple of weeks now, we'll have a chance to strip it all apart and have a good look at it. But, um, you know, we qualified pretty well this morning, um, qualified third, finished fifth, and the car seemed to be pretty good. But um, this afternoon, as I say, we've had a gearbox problem and, uh, and the handling seems to have gone off the car as well for some reason. Whether we've broken something or we've got a problem with the diff, I don't know, but uh, that's yeah. something else we need to check out. So it's not going around the corners properly and under all. power? Absolutely. Yeah, right, absolutely. Eh? Quite frightening. Yeah, I'm sure, especially somewhere here where there's, 
there's yeah, no yeah, margin exactly, for error. Exactly, yeah. You've got to you, you, you've got to be able to concentrate with a car that's uh, handling well. Yeah. To your right. Well, hopefully you'll get to the bottom of those problems, and we'll we'll catch you back flying again at the end of the year. Yeah, hope yeah. so. Good stuff. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Let's go back to Jerry, have a look at some of the track action. An action it's bound to be, James, because coming to the line is Trevor Willis. With a couple of hundred horsepower less than the big V8s, his OMS Powertech is at a bit of a disadvantage here at Shelsley, but from the way Trevor drives, you'd hardly notice it. Full power round crossing and the OMS twitches violently. Sparks fly through the kink as he keeps the throttle nailed and his time to the S's is on a par with the best. Sideways again out of the top S and Trevor closes to within two hundredths of a second of championship rival Chris Merrick. Martin Groves comes to the line during the final runoff knowing that this run will be a difficult balancing act. He's already lost his championship lead to Scott Moran with that spin in the morning and he must claw back serious points to stay on terms but he can't afford to throw another round away. Total commitment through crossing, he's up into the S's at 137 miles an hour. No mistakes this time and that's a good exit from the top S. Moran waits at the paddock exit, his eyes on the time display. 23.38 sets the pace, that's the target for the new championship leader. All eyes are on Scott Moran as he brings the Nicholson McLaren proud goal to the line for the final run of the day. The big question, can he beat Grove's time and extend his narrow two point championship lead? Away from the start and the Gould snakes under power. Up into Kennel and he's really giving it everything. Scott knows he can beat Martin's time, he's already done that to win the opening runoff, but can he do it again? Up into the S's, Moran's just two hundredths ahead. It's got to be quick out of top S. The Gould snakes again, but Scott straightens it all out for the dash to the line. Time to beat 23-3-8. He's done it, 23-1-2 in a new fastest time of the day. So after his double win at Shelsley, defending champion Scott Moran takes sole charge of the championship for the first time this year. But he's only three points ahead of Groves and there's a long way to go yet. Trevor Willis is well aware of that too as he edges ever closer to the third place Chris Merrick. Join us after the break as the action moves to Shropshire and Loughton Park.